Pedal power, yes, please. Thank you. Thank you, Klaus, for this very inspiring uh, lecture. And uh, um, yeah, OK, no tunnels. It's good, good to know for us in the planning committee. Be innovative. And people cycle because it is easier and faster. Uh, build superhighways. Be ambitious. Um, Bicycle policy, policy is not about left or right, it is about the future of mankind. And cycling is the happiest way to, uh, of transporting, transport. These were the, some of the viewpoints I yep. got. Uh, excellent. And, but we have time for some questions. I'm sure there are many. I'll stay around the whole day. Yeah, okay. There, there, are, there are. Morten, please. I wonder if you would like to summarize uh, the, the strategic advice for, uh, for, for the, the state authorities in, in Iceland. What is the, the most important thing that they should do? Uh, you I, mentioned I, the yeah, second yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I, I think the most important thing is a political leadership. I mean, to make sure that our political leaders actually have the insight that they need to formulate uh, the correct policies in this. This is, of course, a lot of lobbying. Uh, and, of course, you are very bad off if you have a minister that simply does not, or a government leader that is simply not interested in this. This happened. The first big Danish cycle pad pot was made by a right-wing government but the then Minister for Transport had a very strong personal interest in cycling. He was a keen cyclist himself, and that's a good starting point. And basically the same goes for the, for, for the minister who is, is there right now. Uh, the um, the uh, coming Danish EU Commissioner, Margrethe Vestager, uh, who was the Vice Prime Minister in Denmark, is also a keen cyclist. Actually, her parents are members in our organization, so she was brought up with it. She was the one who uh, both, when she was sworn in by the Queen and when she had to resign, arrived at the palace on a bicycle. And that, especially the first picture, went all around the world because oh, we've never seen anything so peculiar and so strange, <laughs> like a minister arriving there. But it, it, it does happen. But I think it's important to make sure, I mean, do the lobbying properly. Uh, don't be aggressive. Uh, try to make people understand and change their viewpoints. Uh, and I think, and I know some of you also represent uh, public authorities and municipalities, but do work closely together with local NGO groups. I mean, we did that a lot in the city of Copenhagen. We had a very strong cooperation with the organization that I'm now ahead of by actually testing our policies with them uh, making sure that, that they had them in advance so they could, when we said something from the city, that actually the Cyclist Federation would say, yeah, really great, well done, well thought of. To be honest, some of it were their ideas, but we, I mean, to have that, but I think you can do that on a local level also. If there are sort of any local small groups in the municipality, go out and find them and nurture them uh, and work with the internet. There is a very, very, very strong pro-cycling community on the internet and get inspired by what other countries, and I mean, of course, Iceland do has some special issues because of the geography, because of its size, but check out the website of the European Cyclist Federation, because there's a lot of examples from all over, not only Europe, but all over the world. In the United States, there's a, a lot of interesting work going on these years in a lot of cities, supported by a great organization called People for Bikes. So I think it's, it's this whole sort of lobbying that uh, that um, and maybe i mean it's not because you paid me to say this but i think it's actually important <laughs> but i think it is impo i mean as a politician it's always important to have uh, clever people on the other side because then you can develop something if there's any possibility for the authorities to support the organizations one way or the other so they can lift themselves up from 
I mean, not only being volunteer people, but actually professional organizations. We're big in there. We have 24 staff in, in our office in Copenhagen. So it's a, it, we're a big organization with a, with a huge influence and, and, and are used a lot by the state and, uh, and uh, also by the municipality as a professional NGO. And I think, I mean, th that is how our democracy works today. And I think, uh, yeah, I think you deserve support from your side. I can't support you more clearly. Thank you, Klaus. A good idea indeed. And Harpa, you also wanted to say something. Uh, yes, uh, my name is Harpa. I, uh, Can you stand up, Harpa? My name is Harpa. I uh, have just some comments because uh, I have uh, been doing research in bicycle. Um, I just want to say that uh, you had some uh, famous phrases about how to colonize yeah. the world. Uh, and I must say that uh, I think we have to be aware of that uh, things could be different in different places. Like you said, be aware of the tunnels. Uh, be aware of what? Be aware of making tunnels. Yeah. Uh, maybe that's not uh, the same for, for example, Reykjavik. Uh, you showed us the picture from uh, the small situation. Uh, that's, I don't think that's our problem here. Our no, problem here is the wind. Yeah. The biggest problem is the wind, yeah. I, I think. And, uh, well, perhaps in Copenhagen it's not so, so nice to make tunnels because you have flat landscape. Mm -hmm. But here we have hilly landscape and different situations. Mm -hmm. And we have this wind. And uh, in some situations, it could be better to make actual tunnels. And they, they have, uh, in Malmö, for example, they have been making really nice tunnels. So I think you have to look at uh, the situation for each place. Yeah, uh, I think I said that when I, when, I, when I talked about sort of innovative approach, I said that these were examples where I'm... I do understand that the tunnel is a very good thing in a, uh, in a more hilly society. I think security and the feeling of safety is by far the most important thing. I understand that you are in a car, drive through a tunnel, it's extremely safe. But if you have to walk through a dark tunnel with no lights, with no security surveillance, it's not a very nice feeling. Um, I mean. If you have, you have some very, one of the things I saw, for example, we were driving by the, the sea uh, here, I don't know what, what's it called, down by the, yeah. yeah. There's long, long stretches where you cannot pass the road because you've decided to build some very heavy traffic road so you cannot walk down to the sea. That could be a place where one would think, oh yeah, let's make a tunnel here. I just don't think it's a good idea. I mean, I, I do not think it's a good idea because tunnel attracts in most societies, junkies, uh, people who go down with dogs, and so forth and so forth. So I'd much rather make it another infrastructure. But it is possible to make really nice tunnels, and they have done that in London. Good. So it's, uh, yeah. it's about how the tunnel is designed. Yeah, it's also about how the tunnel is, is, is designed. And secondly, with the wind, that was why I talked a lot about the e-bike, because that actually gives the answer to some of the wind issues. Uh, if you're not sort of a really strong Viking. Okay, uh, any other questions? Yes, behind, please stand up and my introduce name's yourself. Yeah. Yeah. My name is Albert, I'm from uh, a board member of the Icelandic yeah, Federation. I would like to ask about parking spaces in Copenhagen, the policies about that. Whew. It's a huge problem. I mean, because there are simply not enough, uh, and uh, there is a cultural aspect to it that there is a tendency for cyclists just to leave their bicycle wherever they want to leave it, and not really thinking about that maybe old people have to pass it, maybe people in wheelchair or people who have bad sight has to pass by, or even that there just has to be a flow by, they're just leaving it there, forgetting that two other bicycles are parked behind it. I think it's very rude and very stupid, and. Uh, yeah, I was at a meeting once and then a lady came 10 minutes late and when she walked in the door she said, oh, excuse me for being late, I just had to park my bicycle. 
<laughs> I, re I actually like that because sometimes in, in, in very strong traffic junctions, I mean, around stations, for example, or around shopping centers, we have to realize that sometimes we have to look a little, like at the car driver, we have to look a little longer to find a, a safe uh, parking space for us. We have a huge problem around stations, uh, and, uh, and the thing we're lacking in Denmark is, I mean, I showed the, 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 the big infrastructure project. We lack that with parking now. I think the Dutch have been very good in that and sort of lifting that to the next generation. And they have some very, very beautiful examples in the Netherlands on, on, on how this uh, uh, can be done. Uh, we have a huge, pro I heard that the minister uh, got her bike stolen. I mean, somebody give her a new bike so she can start cycling again. <laughs> I mean, it's not that expensive. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but uh, but uh, um, um, bicycle theft is also an enormously big problem. I can say this because I'm not a politician anymore. I do not think that the police does enough uh, on bicycle theft. It's probably not an issue here, but we have a lot of organized crime around bicycle theft, uh, around stations where you simply see a pickup truck coming, four men jumping out, that one, that one, that one, that one, and they just f and drive it to Eastern Europe or where, wherever. But I mean, I, I, I need the police a lot in this. Okay, and behind, if you would stand up. Uh, Harry, yeah. My name is Ori Gunnarsson, I'm an urban planner. Uh, I noticed that you did not count uh, urban fabric and population density as one of the reasons for the success of cycling culture in Copenhagen. What today are you involved with the planning commissions or the, the local governments in advocating a certain mm. urban form yeah. that supports biking and reduces uh, motorized traffic? For example, reduction in number of parking spaces, certain height of buildings. Uh, I only had 50 minutes today. I could basically talk for a week on uh, on cycles, uh, which I will not do. Um, so I took out some slides, but there are some slides on new urban develop. I do have some slides on new urban development in Copenhagen. Uh, there is sort of a, uh, we call it the 30-30-30 model, in the sense that whenever uh, new urban developments are done, uh, one tries to work with a um, sort of trio modal split 30% in private cars, 30% on bicycle, and 30% uh, with the, with the, with the, did I say public transport, private cars, and, 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 and bicycles. Um, also, the uh, national planning uh, regulation says that you are not allowed to build offices further away than 600 meters from public transport, that you are supposed to make parking facilities for bicycles, uh, and, and so forth. So I think it is a pretty integrated uh, part. The uh, Danish uh, Commission for, uh, for, for Environment just made some very interesting research on how the uh, model city looked like. The funny thing is that uh, the, the research showed that, of course, uh, if you big, build big sort of hypermarkets outside the cities, that does not make people cycle. But if you have certain distances between workplace, school, shopping facilities, and so forth, you can actually uh, create that. The funny thing that the survey showed was that, uh, except from Copenhagen and Aarhus, the two big cities, no city in Denmark is bigger than seven times seven kilometers. That gives distance that you can easily cycle within 15 minutes. So basically, all Danish cities, there is a possibility to cycle around. In some places, the tracks are needed, but I think that was quite an eye-opener. Um, and again, I think it's, it's, it's a proof that it's very important to make these surveys and, uh, and, and set aside money to do that instead of just building a bicycle lane here. I mean, think cleverly about uh, how you do it and on a high level, make sure that you have ambitious targets that, that, that you want to uh, reach uh, with, uh, with that. Já, tíminn er nú eiginlega búin sem var okkur rættlaður í þannig lið af því það er komið að kaffi en það var nú ein, er ein stutt spurning en ég held að við ættum að, ef ekki bara taka hana seinna, taka við hana Klaus. 
að því að við ætlum að reyna að vera svolítið nákvæm á tímanum. En ég ætla að hérna sem sagt byrja þá sem eru næsti það Bryndís og Þórólfur að láta ef við erum með hann á lestaran ykkar á svona kubbum með einhverju slík og láta hann mottin langa að fá það svo hann geti matað maskinurnar með því. En það er sérst kaffi í hvað er kvartir? Mottin. Tíu myndur og hérna en áður en færi þá ætlaði ég að svo er for dæ Klaus er ný bó um sífilbó á með Ísland og nótt að koma í gen svo kannst þú móske fóna óli í dýja. Já, takk.